communication, from gaucho spaces, peach mail, and instructor announcements, to Canvas's inbox and announcements features. This video will cover the differences between Canvas's announcement and inbox features, and it'll walk through how to send a new announcement and a new inbox message in Canvas. So first, the differences between announcements and inboxes and when you might use one versus the other. Announcements in Canvas are most similar to Gaucho Space's instructor announcements features. They can be sent to the entire class or to specific sections. Canvas's announcements allows you to format the text. And although the option is available to allow students to publicly reply or comment, the default is for there to be no reply. It's simply a communication from you, the instructor, or TA, to the students. I think of announcements as a really great way to send weekly reminders to students, updates, or important announcements that impact an entire class or an, an entire section. Canvas's inbox feature, on the other hand, is more similar to Gaucho Space's peach mail. Not only does it allow you to send communication to the entire class or to specific sections, you can also send communication to flexible recipient groups. So for example, you could send communication to one student or to a small group of students who you need to coordinate a group presentation for. The inbox function in Canvas allows for very minimal text formatting, and it does provide the option for students to reply back to you. At UCSB, both announcements and inboxes are sent immediately to a user's UCSB email by default, but users and students can change these preferences if they'd like to, from the default to immediately receive an email to something else, say for example, to receive an app notification. Now that we know a little bit about the difference between announcements and inbox messages, let's walk through how to send one. Here I am logged into my Canvas account and I'm on my course page. If I'm using the default settings, students will be able to see announcements that have been sent, recent announcements, at the top of their homepage. You and students can also see previous announcements that have been sent from the course navigation menu by clicking on the announcements tab. Here, I'll see my announcements that I've sent, uh, I can see the subject, I can see the date and time which that announcement was sent. To send a new announcement to the entire class or to a specific section, I'll go ahead and click plus announcements in the top right hand corner. And this will open up looking very similar uh, to an email. My topic title is the subject of my announcement. So here I'm welcoming students to the first day of class. And then this larger text box allows me to type in the content of my announcement. I do have access to Canvas's rich content editor where I can format the text, I can embed hyperlinks or embed media. Once I have the composition of my announcement down, if I scroll down, I'll see various other options. The post to option allows me to choose who I'm sending this notification to. By default, announcements are sent to all students in the course, but I can also choose to send it to a specific section or multiple sections. I have the option to include an attachment if I desire. Other options available in Canvas's announcements feature is the option to delay posting. This is great if I'm typing, you know, late Sunday night, but I want this to hit students' inbox first thing Monday morning. I can go ahead, type it out on Sunday, 
click the box to delay posting and choose the date at time at which I want to make this announcement available to students, uh, as well as send those notifications off. Other options available using Canvas's announcement feature is the ability to allow users to publicly comment. That's great if I want students to be able to ask questions or reply back to this announcement. And then myself, my TAs, or other students can see those comments and reply back to them. If I am including media in my announcement, message, I can choose to enable a podcast feed that students can subscribe to. And I can also allow liking, a way for students to give kind of a thumbs up to this announcement that I've sent. Once my message is composed, I've selected my appropriate options, I can go ahead and click publish. This then makes the announcement visible to students in Canvas, and it also by default sends them an email to their UCSB email accounts, again, either immediately or at the date and time I've selected using the delay posting option. So announcements, that first way to send communication, great for the whole class or whole section uh, communication. The second way to send communication to students through Canvas is using the inbox feature. You can access your Canvas inbox from the global navigation menu, that's the leftmost navigation menu, clicking inbox. Here, uh, it'll look open similar to an, an Outlook inbox or an email inbox. I can filter for specific co uh, courses in the top left uh, so if I want to look at messages from a specific course, I can filter my inbox that way. I can also uh, filter it. Uh, by default, it'll show me my inbox messages I've received. But I can also further filter that to see just my unread messages or maybe messages that I've starred. I can also access any sent messages or archived messages using this filter uh, to the right-hand side of my courses dropdown. Uh, I can see any messages in my inbox here on the left. And if I click on that message, it'll expand it on the right. Uh, I can see who sent that message, the content of their message, and I can reply back to that student using the reply option. Students will be able to see these replies, not only in Canvas, but again, by default, they receive these uh, to, a copy of these to their UCSB email address as well. To send a new message or compose a new message in Canvas's inbox, I'll go ahead and click this compose a new message icon. Uh, it's a, a pencil inside of a square here at the top. And then again, very similar to an email, I have the option uh, to select who I want to send it this to. It's the first thing I need to do. So here I, it's asking me to choose which course these students that I want to send it to are in. Um, and so I can go ahead and select the course uh, that I'm trying to send this to. Then it opens up this two box where I can choose the individual students or groups of students or sections of students that I want to send the message to. Uh, and this allows you just to directly type into it. So say, for example, you need to send uh, Anne, a student in your class, a message um, because you need to reschedule an appointment you had with her. You can go ahead and type in Anne's name, click on it, type in that subject message and click send. And this then sends the message over to Anne. Uh, I can type in multiple students here if I want to. Again, maybe I need to send this to both Anne and Joe. I can go ahead and, and click individual students. The inbox also has this address book feature here to the right hand side. So if you're not sure you want to send it to groups, not maybe to individual students, but to groups of students, um, or you need to be able to kind of look at the list of students to send it to, you can use this address book feature to the right hand side of the two bar. And this will allow you to send it to all. So you can send it to all of your students and the uh, people associated with your course. You can filter by roles. So say, for example, I want to go ahead and TA my 
uh, CC my TAs on this message. I can go ahead and click all. And so now this message would be going to Anne, Joe, and I am including all of my uh, uh, users that have the teacher assistant roles in my course, essentially CCing my TAs on this message. And I can continue to add, uh, use this address book to add additional users as needed. So again, I can click students, for example, can add all of my students with one click or choose individual students to add as needed. I can uh, remove folks as needed here as well uh, by hovering over. So once I've selected who I want to send this message to, I can include my subject and my message uh, description, everything I want to communicate out. Down at the bottom left, I have the option to add an attachment or record media. And then I can go ahead and click send. This then would send this notification out to students. They can also access it uh, directly in Canvas. I do want to draw your attention to one specific setting here that uh, is pretty important. It's this send an individual message to each recipient. So by default, uh, Canvas's inbox messages will send this as a group message. Uh, so a CC when you're sending it to fewer than 100 people. So here, for example, I'm sending this message to Anne, Joe, and Paul. By default, Anne can see that Joe and Paul received this message. And if she replies back, she can have the option to send it not only to me, but also to Joe and Paul. So it's a group message. We're all collaborating on one thread. If I need to send something sensitive uh, to students that I don't want them to know who else received this message, um, or I don't want them to be able to respond in group, I'm going to go ahead and want to select this option to send an individual message to each recipient. Now, Anne is receiving her own thread. Joe is receiving his own thread of this message. If Anne replies, she doesn't see that Joe and Paul received this message. She doesn't have an option to reply back to them. It's simply a thread between me, the sender, and Anne, the student. So just keep that in mind as you're uh, crafting these inbox notifications that by default, if you're sending it to uh, less than 100 students, fewer than 100 students, uh, this will be sent as a group message unless you've checked the option to send it as an individual message. So that is the inbox, Canvas's inbox. So uh, we have today gone through the two different ways uh, to send communication in Canvas, the announcements feature and the inbox feature. Uh, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.